We're going to do the same thing now with the window. Now we've set this up in a way that's not necessarily conducive for adding a window at the moment, so I'm going to stretch this or move it a little bit. So I put in a few of these white boxes, and these white boxes are again representing that there is a break. Everything between here is the same as what we see on both sides. And I drew this noggin in to explain in a wall frame, then we have a horizontal piece of timber that separates the studs in order to make sure that they don't bow or twist. But we don't want to show that now. So we're going to remove that, we're going to reduce these down. And we're going to focus now on the putting the window in the middle here. Now we might need to stretch this up a little bit because otherwise it might be a bit too small. So in order to stretch that, we're going to use the stretch tool. But in order to use the stretch tool, we first need to create a marquee. So I'm creating a marquee over the area where I want to stretch because I want to make it a little bit bigger. I could have used a rectangular box, but in this case, I would have not been able to get around that rafter edge. Edit, reshape, stretch. And that way I can just pull that up and it stretches everything that's in between without wrecking anything. Of course, if I didn't have anything continuous, I could have just pressed drag and that would have done the same thing. Alright, so we, we want to still have a replication of this insulation running past. So maybe I can now continue that back through. And I actually do want to have a, a block of timber like before. But in this case, I'm now no longer talking about a noggin. Now I'm talking about a sill plate. And that's what happens at the bottom of the window. So let's bring that down a bit. Now what happens at the top of the window? At the top of the window we have a lintel. Now depending on the size of the window, that lintel might just be a piece of timber like this turned on edge, or it could be a much larger piece of timber. Just to make this simple, we're just going to do it this way. And let's just double that up to make it very simple. So we're assuming this is a quite small window in this instance. What do we now need? We now need to place the window. Where do we get that from? Again, a window can be a very complicated detail, and it depends on the manufacturer, the type, the cladding, so much stuff. So where do we get it from? AWA, let's just go back a bit. So www.awa.org.au gives us some pretty useful information on explaining how windows work. So this is a PDF that we can download. So I press download. I've placed this into my desktop already. And then we want to drag and drop this onto the page. Which page do we want? I think I'm off to page 22. Twenty-one, maybe. Okay, that's it. So this is our aluminium window, single skin veneer construction. So if we look at the detail, what are we looking at here? We're looking at timber frame. So that's the lintel that we we're just talking about. They've shown it slightly differently, but same, same. Uh, this is our jam detail. We're not working with this one at the moment. We're just working with this one, our head, and this one, our sill. And here we see that that is that. Uh, sill plate that we were talking about before. So we've got all of the bits and pieces. We need to make sure that this is to scale. Like before, we can explode this. Now the priority of the AWA is not to tell us a lot about the window frames and the glazing and everything that happens, but more the relationship between the frame and the window, which is great because most window frame manufacturers do the opposite. They tell us a lot about the window frame and a lot about the glazing, but nothing very much about how it relates to the wall. So having this information is a great head start. So we can copy some of this information if we want to. Again, that's going to make our life very easy. 
We could even copy some of this information if we want to in terms of weatherboards. Drag a copy and I'm going to drag it from the edge of this lintel over to here. What do we see? The scale is probably off, isn't it? We're probably talking about the scale needs to be halved. So I've got my uh, suspend grouping. I want to edit, reshape, resize. And in this case, we'll do 50% based on that same point. That's probably right. We don't know the thickness of this, but we could assume that maybe we're talking about uh, a 70 mil, 75 mil stud. So that's probably what we're after. Now let's just move this away. We also see when we're drawing details, sometimes we leave gaps. So should there be a gap between the stud and the flashing and the weatherboard? Not necessarily, but the reality is that we can't actually see everything, particularly once we turn the true line weight on. We can't see everything if we have it all bashed up against each other. So we do need to actually leave a gap to be able to see what we're trying to show. All right, so we need to fix some of these details and replace some of these materials. So I'm gonna pick up the setting of my timber and I'm going to inject that into, now I could do this with my flooring as well, inject that into my reveal and I'll do the same thing with my architrave. Miss that one, let's try that again. So we could use the architraves that they've got here. I, I personally wouldn't, not a big fan of them, but that's a, bit, a decent place to start. Where does the plasterboard stop? We want it to stop in line with the lentils and we'll extend this out. Now we might have a quirk where we set that back maybe five millimeters or something like that. And I want to change the settings of this as well. This is a polyline, so I want to insert a solid fill into here to represent my aluminum frame. Let's then delete that polyline. And I, if I want to use a, a timber weatherboard, I could use the same one for that one as well. Now down the bottom, we see that it's very, very similar. The, de the detail that we have at the bottom is very similar to the top. We will just copy these again. May as well copy all of it. We need to halve that again. Edit, reshape, resize, 50% and move that into place. Now I don't need to move my top plate, so I'll use everything else to put it in the right place. Right, so let's move all this. I don't want that line. Move drag. Let's again update these settings. Alt, Control Alt to inject.
So what are we looking at here? We're looking at flashing. Just going to make that a little bit more deliberate. Again, pick up the settings of this, place it into here. And we make this one grey instead. So there we have our window detail, we have our exterior cladding, we have our interior lining and trim, our reveal and architrave and packing at the bottom, and we see that we deliberately leave a gap at the top, we don't pack that out because we don't want the structural weight of the wall bearing down on the window frame. We fix this window frame into the reveal, and that's in a box all the way around. The window frame is a box and the reveal is generally a box all the way around which allows us to fix that off to the studs, fix it to the sill, fix it to the head, but again, we don't want to have the weight of the lintel bearing onto the top of the window, so we always leave a gap there. So we've used, again, other people's detailing and that's the purpose of it. That's why they've created it, so there's nothing wrong with doing that for our process. We don't have to redesign it. But you might decide, I don't want to use this architrave. I don't want my reveal to be this shape or size. I don't want to use this type of aluminium frame. Instead, I want to use a timber frame or a UPVC frame. Or I want to use a thermally broken aluminium frame. Or maybe I want to make it frameless. Of course, that means it's probably going to be fixed glass. But there's a lot of different ways that we can do a lot of different detailing, particularly when we're trying to be creative. So experiment, have a play, come up with some interesting detailing. If you're new to this, use what is available in order to be able to be conforming to the industry standards and also the Australian standards in this instance.